little volatility uh, in uh, with the Fed raising a quarter of point today, Jason. It is episode uh, 199. We've done this 199 times, Skylar. Do you remember when we started? I do. It, we've come a long way. How about it's Jason? Like, do you remember? I kind of want to go yeah. back and like watch the first I know, episode. It, and it, just it's see really changed since we started it. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway, uh, a stock that I have followed since I was uh, 10 years old, passed 500,000 today a share. And with the uh, 30 shares I have, I think I'm going to retire. Whew. You think I should retire? No. Okay. I wish I had 30 shares. Hey, it is uh, the 16th of March, March 16th, 2022. My name is Todd Alt. This is Jason Bartholomew. Thanks for showing up today, everyone. Jason, really I got it. the chance to meet Mullen yesterday. Mullen Technologies, the automotive company that trades like butter. Yeah. I don't know why. Massive. Uh, massive. I got to go to the uh, kind of the headquarters see two of the cars. There's some videos on my Twitter. The Mullen CEO, David Mishery, is going to be on, David Mishery is going to be on here about 1.30 today, coming up in about uh, 17 minutes. Yep. Doesn't it feel like a regular broadcast when I do that? Hey, we're doing it live. Got, we're doing it live. you got to prep the show. Uh, 199. Wow. 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 What? 199. Uh, let's you, see here. David well, Mishery. Uh, from Mullen Automotive, here will be here joining us. Uh, he has become a gilded force in the EV industry and is determined to provide clean transportation to everyone. Prior to finding Mullen Technologies, he had a successful music career where he transformed the labels and ran uh, and ran into multi and ran multimedia what labels and ran into multimedia companies. I don't know what that means. Uh, I know he was in the music business. Um, I'll tell you one thing: the designs are beautiful. I saw them yesterday. Do we have pictures? Can we put it on the big board? Sure. That's the Dragonfly. Oh, wow. Check this out. Yeah, that's the Dragonfly. That car, to me, uh, the Dragonfly looks like a Bugatti. That's sick. That's yeah, a nice sure. design. That's uh, I saw that car yesterday right there. Hey, everybody. Uh, check out the Risk On Conference. Uh, there is a link now where you can sign up and actually pay and buy conference tickets. Listen, before we talk about the conference, I want to say I price this so that everyone could come, and it includes your hotel rooms. So when you first look at it, know that it includes your hotel rooms. Go to toddalt.com forward slash what? I can't see what it says, forward slash R-O-C. what? Well, she's pushing it closer. I can't see R-O-C. it. Uh, R-O-C. It's right on the other screen. R-O-C? Yeah. R dot O-C? Or, oh, got it. Okay. Toddalt forward slash R-O-C. I, we should make it like simple on the front page where I can just click a button. Uh, check out, let's, uh, let's run the clip. You have a business that's doing a million, a half a million, and you want to grow to 15, 20 million, these things are going to be available to you. We are launching a platform, the Risk On Business platform. This will make somebody's life about a thousand times better. You got a business and you want to expand your business, whether you're in the restaurant business, you're in technology, you manufacture something, whatever your business is, if you want to scale it, you want to be here. This is going to be a conference where you can learn something, meet people and network. Limited slots are available. Head over to Tottle.com and register today. All right. Hey, Mullen CEO is going to be here in about uh, 14 minutes. I got a chance to meet him yesterday. Looked a little busy. Kind of was in a hurry to get rid of me. But that's okay. I'm this executive chairman of a company with 400 employees or 350, whatever we have now, yeah. and growing. Yep. And I understand what it means to be redlined. And the guy looks redlined. I mean, people, I was actually there at the studio yesterday, or at the, the show place, and I met a guy, well, I was with a guy who already bought a car, like just put the deposit down. So I don't know how many deposits they've got, but we're going to talk cars with the CEO. We're going to attack the design. We're going to talk about the company. Uh, it'll be fun to talk to him. I want to leave the uh, dragonfly. I got to give. Back. I know, but hold on. I got to give everyone who watches this show, and I know a lot of people watch it later. Uh, there's some people watching it live, but a lot of people watch it later. I want to give you full disclosure. Okay, so please listen to this. <clears throat> we invested in the company when it was a private company. We are uh, Nile N I L E. That used to be all global. As everyone knows, I'm transforming the company. Uh, 
people clearly don't care about that because they're giving it away to me. Uh, I bought 7 million shares and they keep giving me the stock. So don't know what to say about it. I've kind of done commenting. Okay, so you guys want to give it away? That's fine. But that being said, we had a big position in Mullen and it has done incredibly well. I'm not commenting on the stock's performance, but obviously we got in as a private company. We filed the 13G and holy bejeepers have we made money here. Uh, and we continue to hold a preferred in Mullen. So I want to give you full disclosure. We own a position in the company. I am not recommending the stock. I am not endorsing the stock. I bought it when it was a private company for Nile, okay? For a subsidiary of Nile, wholly owned subsidiary. So full disclosure, we're done with that. No one later can claim that they didn't know we own stock in this, okay? So all the regulators who like to, you know, do their job, which is what the regulators do, I've given you full disclosure, Nile has a position long in Mullen. We've already, we bought it when it was a private company. We have the option of putting in more capital, okay? So I, I have a vested interest in the company, but I'm not recommending it to you, okay? Now, I am saying the cars are beautiful, and I'm into the artistry of the car. I'm into EV. As you know, we own um, Turn On Green, which we're, we're, gonna, we're doing great stuff there. We're, dude, you really have killed it, by the way. <laughs> Turn On Green. You, you brought in INET, and they yeah. continue to buy and deliver yeah. The EV 700s. I saw yep. a great review on the EV 700s. Yeah, Did that you was. See that? Bio, that was a great yeah. four out of five star, four and a half out of five stars. So I was pretty excited about that. Uh, check out the podcast, Tuttle Podcast. Check me out on. Uh, can we throw up uh, like my my Instagrams and hey 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 hey, <laughs> all you fraudsters out there that try to use my name to get money from people. I don't do that. Yeah. By uh, we I am now verified on Twitter. I'm verified on Instagram. I got the blue check mark finally. It only took 1.9 million <laughs> followers to get it. But I did get it. Special thanks to the king. Uh, everyone knows the king is an agent. And he's connected with all these agencies. Like, you know, big names. Right? And he just, and literally, I'm not joking around. He calls me up on the phone here. You're my, I'm going to be your agent. Because, you know, I, I do some speaking. So he says, okay, I'm going to be your agent. I, and he goes, okay, I got you done. I'm like, yeah, sure, dude. I've been trying to get verified for two or three years. Yep. And in one millisecond, this guy got me. I'm not joking. One millisecond, boom, blue check. It's good to be the king. Sick. In one, I mean, literally, not believable what this guy did. Hey, coming up, uh, the Mullen CEO will be on here in 10 minutes. Looking forward to it. Um, let's check out the Bitnile car, which will be racing in Texas this weekend. Texas, Texas, Texas. Hold on a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Uh, we'll be at Texas Motor Speedway uh, uh, in Fort Worth, the 18th through the 20th, the XPEL 375 Oval Race Car Race, uh, which I love, Indy, by the way. I love the sponsorship here. It'll be our 200th episode on this Friday. We'll be doing it live from Texas. Bit now is part with Ed Carpenter Racing. Connor Daly's racing our car, the number 20 car. We have three entries that are going to compete. Renus VK, Ed Carpenter, Alzheimer's going to be there. Check it out. Let's run the clip. Driver, start your engine! If I had a level of expectation of networking and ability to turn on green and all of our assets, what was it between a 1 and a 10? It was like a 9.25. It was way more than I expected. I, I could not believe how incredible that event was. Dude, the experience was incredible. The people were incredible. And that's what I'm there for. It was amazing how well received the fans were and how they wanted to know about Bitnot. And obviously it's on to Texas March 20th. Nice. Race day is Sunday, by the way. Well, I'm looking at the comments here. I don't even know if I can keep up with them. <clears throat> hmm. Okay. Well, uh, we're going to have the Mullen CEO on, on a not, uh, eight or nine minutes here. Uh, wow, we are busy, busy, busy. Uh, the Bit Nile car, uh, Connor Daly's running it. Uh, turn on green, risk on, Toddalt.com's on the car. <laughs> Renus VK, love this guy. Love this young racer, yeah, Renus yeah. VK. Holy smokes. Uh, of course, Ed Carpenter's piling the Alzheimer's Neuro car. That's a sponsorship not paid by Alzheimer's Neuro. That is something we're excited about to get the word out because we are a big shareholder. Nile, through a subsidiary, owns shares of Alzheimer's Neuro. 
Come on. And I'm the founder, by the way. Uh, the drivers make 248 laps uh, at the Texas Motor Speedway, and 2 million people will tune in. By the way, St. Petersburg was incredible. But you know what's more incredible? You guys have any idea how hard it is to install? The, uh, we just got word that you, if everyone knows we published this schedule, and we bought 20,600 miners for our Michigan location. And you've already put in, what, 2,185 with mm -hmm. 297 coming this weekend. Yeah, I got uh, got my work cut out for me. I got stuff in transit, mass quantities. Right, but yesterday they said the 2,300 are now on schedule. They're shipping them. Mm -hmm. And here's my problem. Copper cable, expensive and hard to get. The logistics. Now, this is what blows my mind. I'm going to tell everyone the inside about this. If you've ever been involved in Bitcoin mining, and we are, we're mining Bitcoin crazy, 24-7, 365. been mining it for like... We started in 17, had a little bit of a hiatus, but now we're full steam ahead. Yeah. And we're going to have 2.2 or 2.3x a hash, right? Yeah, 2.24. So we're mining. We, we, I think we talked about mining somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 to 180 million, depending on price. Bitcoin, by the way, now 41,000 or so uh, a coin. But I'm just mesmerized that you have to get an entire plane. So talk about that. You're going to be chartering a plane to fly the next 2300. Yeah, over. I got a call with uh, with our shipping partner after the show for uh, to arrange for pickup of uh, 1973 ASICs miners out of Thailand. So I don't think I'm going to be able to get a, uh, a Russian Antonov plane anytime soon. They're not available. No. Hey. <laughs> You don't, you don't have Russian oh, yeah. and off planes available? They're made in, what, they're made what, in Ukraine, by the yeah, way. Yeah, they are. They are. What, what, yeah, and I think they bombed the plant, yeah, they by the way. they probably did. I heard they bombed the plant. Motherfuckers. That makes sense. Yeah. And they bombed, like, you know, it's just terrible over there. Terrible. Yeah. Uh, but uh, <sighs> smash the like button. Yeah, for sure. So 299, 297, 1973, all those machines so that's are... almost 5,000. You're yeah, getting we're, close, right? We're, we're getting up to almost a half a exahash. Yeah, right. So that's about two and some change Bitcoin a day. Yeah. That's... By the way, for those of you who don't know this, we've already published the schedule... And I'm done commenting on the fact that we've already sent more than $100 million for miners and for the for the facility. Yeah. I mean, millions of $100 million for miners. We knew this moment and was going to And we've already come. wired the money, and the market cap is less than the miner deposit. So on Nile, guys, I, I, I know you guys are tech. I've never seen anything like it in my 32-year career. In my whole life of trading, I, and I'm a buyer. I bought uh, for my fund and other things personally about 7 million shares the last couple months. I'm mesmerized. When I see where it's trading, yep. I am mesmerized, but it is what it is. But speaking of mesmerized, wait till you see how Mullen trades. Have you seen this thing? Well, I'm looking at the after hours. Looking I know, but the sheer volume of Mullen is pretty crazy. Yeah, for sure. 136 million shares traded today. That's nothing. I mean, I've seen this thing. I saw like, it had 500 million yeah, shares over, traded over, today. Over, yeah. I, I, but who start? I mean, how, how do people trade that much? I mean, what do they do? Is that algorithms? Well, it's a lot of algos. I mean, someone sitting there like I am on my phone. Listen, EV, a hot sector, right? Right. Uh, it's a small cap, number two. Right. And it's it, the volume's there, so all the scanners are alerted, right? Number three. Right. All the Discord chats then follow suit, stock right. twits, Twitter, all the fin twit. So it's been, a, it's been a hot button. So what happens if our Mullen holdings are bigger than our market cap? That's pretty sick. That would be funny, wouldn't that it? That would be insane. I mean, it was a point in time where our Alzheimer holdings were bigger than our market cap. I mean, it's the whole yeah. thing is like, I'm ass backwards. I don't know what to say about it. Now... I'm not suggesting that that's the case. I'm suggesting you do the math. Yesterday, a fully independent report. I spoke to this guy one time five months ago. Spartan Capital picked up coverage of Nile, and they initiated with a $7 target. We're not endorsing this report. We were not participants in making the report. But it did do a good job of explaining the company. And we're going to put a link. I put it in my Twitter. There's a great description of the turn on green. Gresham, our defense business, our lending business, what we're doing in Bitcoin mining, Alliance Cloud Services, our ownership of a couple uh, biotechs in there. It even talks, by the way, of our ownership of Mullen, which is interesting to me. Well, we've always taken positions. I know. I tell people ahead of time. I've never, like, targeted so many things. I just think people don't like me. Maybe. Do you think people don't like me? Maybe you're pretty But it feels like my wife likes me. It could be polarizing. How am I polarizing? I buy stock. I'm trying to build a company. We've told them. We've told them since 2017 what our plans were. Now we've we've had some delays and shit like that. Stuff happens. But what are we going to do about it? Hey, uh, I'm. Uh, we're not ready to introduce uh, mystery yet, right? We got like two minutes. Three minutes. Three Can minutes. we cover the market real quick? Yeah. Is that okay with you, Christy? 
Give me a thumbs up. Okay, yeah. We're going to cover the market update. Let's go to the market update real quick because we'll end with Mishery. Yeah, that sounds good. So uh, today, obviously, Powell raised uh, rates a quarter point. The market was uh, up and down in flux. The Dow actually finished up very strongly, 34,063. That was good for a uh, 518 gainer, 155 percentile, 1.55%. The NASDAQ actually even stronger from a percentile standpoint, 13,436, plus 487, 3.77% gainer, S&P 4,357, good for a 95-point uh, gain, 2.24%. What I want to talk about is Bitcoin right now. Obviously, we like to talk about 41, Bitcoin. 41,258.70. I see 41,441. Okay, two of those babies a day, baby. Yeah, yeah. Two of those a day. And then the following month, another one. So three a day, four a day, five a day, six a day. The I love Bitcoin, as yeah. everyone knows. The I'm ramp, a Bitcoin the ramp fanatic. is real for sure. The ramp is real. Ethereum 2756. Oil back down to 95, Todd. Uh, Oil getting in the range. I thought it wasn't going to go back below 90. I could be wrong there. Oil doing well uh, in terms of getting. Uh, dude, I was in California yesterday and I paid six ninety nine a gallon. Why so much? Uh, I don't know, Joe Biden. California taxes, Joe Biden. Uh, yeah, now, Joe Biden blames the Russians. He yeah. blames M M M What's his name? Mikhail Gorbachev? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I'm joking around. He, uh, Vladimir Putin. By the way, you know, I see Elon Musk picking a fight with Vladimir, and I just say... Remember the guy in England that he poisoned when he touched the door handle? Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be, come on, Elon, we need you around, buddy. Don't let the Russian get to you. I'd get some security if I were you. I'd be making sure I wipe down those doors. Well, you know, Elon even said we needed some more oil. Obviously, you know, we need EV as well. We've got, you know, Mullen is, is doing their best. Uh, Centro doing their part. Right. Turn Centro. On, or Centro, Turn On Green. By the way, I talked to David uh, about Turn On Green. Mm -hmm. You know, we provide EV chargers to a lot of companies. Dude, sure. I want to say something publicly, Jason. Not only have you, since you joined me, and I recruited you for years, and you like didn't, you eventually gave in and worked with me. Yeah. Uh, you've done incredible in let, setting up the Bitmain relationship with Frank. Incredible. Right. And you've done an incredible job in EV, right? I mean, the, the EV charger business for me is finally like exciting. I know Amos has engineered it, but really, when you saw the review of the EV700, were you pretty stoked? I was. I was very stoked. He, the, the, he uh, said it should be a longer cord, though. In fairness, at the end, he said longer longer cable would be important. Well, right? I think that, and then eventually look for the the residential EV700 to go to 40 amp. 40 amp? Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't understand any of that. I thought my life depended on it. But, I mean, the thing is, we're, we're, we've made the commitment to uh, the electrification of the grid. A lot of government money out there for grants to help these EV companies. For sure. So, you know, uh, tackling that and taking advantage of that would be uh, very important. So do we have a video? Because he's going to come on. What do we have for Mystery? Or what are we going to put on a picture of the car? What are we doing? Get that dragonfly rolling, man. Can we leave the car up there? Mm -hmm. Can we just, like, rotate the car? Yeah, leave that. I like that. Yeah. Bring on Mystery. To me, by the way, to me, that kind of looks like if I were to look at this. Okay. What about that one over there? Oh, that's sick, too. Oh, I like that one, too. That can looks we, like can we put Urus. that on the screen, too? That looks like the Lambo Urus. Put that on the screen. That, that looks like a Urus. It does. Put that on the, the screen. By the way, he has carbon fiber brakes on the car. I oh, mean, is that him? Yeah, the product is sweet. Wait, wait. Oh, that's Is his, that David? That's his backdrop. Yeah. Oh, it can't hear him. Okay, he's on. Okay. Oh, all right. Hey, we got the CEO and founder of Mullen Technologies, M-U-L-N, on the NASDAQ. It recently listed there a couple months ago. We were, we were investors in the company when it was private. And I'll tell you one thing about David. We don't know each other well, but David is passionate about EV. And you can see he's kind of all in. And why do I like David? Listen, we don't know each other well, but he's a risk-on dude, man. He's taken personal risk. He's went out there and said, I'm going to try to do something crazy David, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. We got to turn him up. I can't hear him. One Stand second, by, everybody. Guys, one Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Hold on, Dave. You? Can, can I hear him, Dave, David, now? Can you hear me okay? David, I hear you, buddy. And I just was telling the audience, and by the way, about 1,500 people have tuned in to see you. You are the rock star of the day. The car in the background, do you think you're a bigger rock star or the car in the background is a bigger rock star? Which one? You or the car? The car, baby. The car. <laughs> now, I, I, I drive a uh, – I have a car, 
let's just say it's Italian made. I want to be clear there when I bought it used and I saved up for like 25 years. So all you bitches out there saying stuff about me <laughs> buying it, I saved up for 25 years and like a little bit every day. Uh, you know, like how you put a nickel away. Uh, so, but what, why am I bringing that up, David? Because I saw your cars and they have the similar brakes to my Italian car. Can you tell people why you put on those ceramic brakes onto a, such a beautiful EV? Absolutely. Um, one, when the car can go really fast, you've got to be able to stop it. And the best uh, uh, braking systems that you can use are carbon ceramics, which you find on very exotic, high-performance vehicles like Porsches, uh, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, cars that go really fast. Uh, carbon ceramics are good uh, for stopping as well as longevity and more importantly uh, for us uh, being an electric vehicle manufacturer we want to reduce weight as much as possible we want to create as much efficient efficiency as possible and how do you do that how do you reduce weight you look at every possible opportunity to reduce weight when you look at a normal vehicle if you take a steel rotor a 15 uh, inch steel rotor and you compare it uh, to a carbon ceramic rotor, a 15 inch carbon ceramic rotor, you're gonna save, you know, 50 pounds of weight. You could, if you could take 200 pounds of weight off of a vehicle, you're gonna increase that car's capabilities. You're gonna make it lighter. You're gonna make it more efficient. And then when you increase the performance specs of the vehicle, you gotta be able to stop it. And no better way to stop a vehicle than with a big brake kit made up of carbon ceramics. So we invested into quality. American quality. Nice. Hey, so for further, full disclosure, as I said earlier before this interview, I've seen a lot of people sign on. For full disclosure, we invested in the company, Nile, N-I-L-E, on the uh, New York American, invested the company when it was a private company. So you should consider this to be a conversation with David and Mullen and know that we own stock in the company. We invested in it was private. For full disclosure, we've done our job to make sure you guys know uh, I'm not endorsing the company's shares, buying, selling, anything like that. It's not a solicitation. We are endorsing, though, how beautiful the car is, David. And, David, this is a show about risk. And what is amazing to me is the personal risk you've told me you've taken. I wondered, like, how did you decide to become a car manufacturer? Like, this is a show about risk. I've taken risk my whole life. When I found out who you were, and I knew you were very successful in the music business, TV production business, Baywatch. I thought, okay, well, why wouldn't he just retire with the Baywatch money, right? Like, what the heck were you thinking when you decided you wanted to start an EV company? Well, first, I spent a considerable amount of time in the entertainment space and was very fortunate to work with some great people that uh, had a knack for taking um, product that maybe wasn't successful in one area and made it successful and you know the guys i worked with at all american communications you know did that with uh, with baywatch took a show that didn't happen and then reworked it and made it happen on a on a global level made it the number one syndicated show in the world but again you know entertainment uh, at that time uh was very exciting um i was able to enjoy uh, success at multiple levels and decided, you know, during that whole time, I was always a big ad advocate of vehicles. I mean, I, who doesn't love cars? I mean, I love cars. And when you made, you know, when you make money and in, in the entertainment space and you're a young guy, what's the first thing you do? You go out and you buy a Ferrari. So I'm a young kid, made a lot of money in the, in the entertainment space. And I went out and bought a Ferrari and thus became a car collector. And as, as time progressed over the years, you add to your collection and uh, you start to appreciate the build of a vehicle. You get into the construction of a vehicle. You get into the performance specs of a vehicle. What makes one vehicle more attractive than another vehicle? You know, you look at designers, you look at Pina Farina, you look at Gallardo, you look at guys that, 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 that uh, reshape the landscape uh, from a design perspective. So I, I spent a considerable amount of time in the entertainment industry and after a very long tenor in it, decided I needed to get into something new. And I was looking for an opportunity to invest into uh, some type of operation. And uh, uh, to be honest with you, I was looking at uh, starting an airline or starting a, uh, an EV company. An airline. Oh, wow. <laughs> you are risk, I, on. You are risk I, on. 
Wow. Well, I, I like things that, that 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 move, right? That either you know fly very very fast or move very very fast on the ground. And so I, I had a great opportunity to acquire an existing um, um, a hybrid company that was developing EVs. A company called Mullen Auto. It was owned by a retired military officer, a guy named Arthur Allen. Him and his son built a, a pretty nice company. Put out a couple of really sexy vehicles. I saw some, I saw some yesterday. They were they were Ferrari looking like cars. Yeah, yeah, great looking vehicles. Keep in mind those vehicles you were looking at were built in the '90s, so you know we're talking a long time ago. So to have a a a, a design that that can withstand time, I thought was really important. So taking into consideration being able to have a um, a vehicle that garnered you know some pretty good um, uh, attention, the vehicle that you looked at the Mullen GT, it was Microsoft used it in their first commercial on TV. So it was it was exciting enough to attract Microsoft, as well as MTV at the time brought it onto a real successful show called MTV Cribs. And um, the lead singer from Lincoln Park, um, you know, was uh, one of the key guys that that bought a vehicle at that time and took it on the show. And so it, it garnered enough attention to to create interest where I was interested in maybe um, buying the company. I looked at the opportunity, purchased the company, and then looked at the car and thought it wasn't commercially viable, meaning I looked at the price point of the vehicle and then looked at the competitors like Ferrari and Lamborghini and decided that no one was going to spend $125,000 when they could buy a Ferrari for $125,000 at the time. So I thought it was a good legacy car and opened it opened up the door to the automotive space and looked at the technology that they were pioneering at the time, which was called dual core drive, which meant that they incorporated gas with electric, which was really the precursor to the very first hybrid ever made. So um, I, I like to believe that we were at the forefront of, of um, electrifying America and in doing so, um, it led us to the acquisition of, of Coda vehicle assets, which gave us the opportunity to have a fully homologated vehicle. Other than the Tesla Model S, the only other vehicle that got homologated back in 2011-12 was the Tesla Model S and the Coda sedan. It was god ugly. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, the car um, wasn't very attractive, but the technology was amazing. And we were looking at the underlying IP as the reason for the acquisition. Again, I tried to put lipstick on a pig and I reintroduced that vehicle in uh, November of 2014 at the LA Auto Show and took a lot of criticism. One, you know, the vehicle was ugly, even though it was the only five passenger uh, four door sedan that was all electric that had a trunk. So anyway, we, uh, you know, we picked up um, where we left off, we were able to service that car. The most important thing that, that I tell people, they say, well, why did you do it? Well, I wanted the IP. And then two, I wanted the experience, right? All the money in the world can't buy you experience on how to sell a car, how to service a car, to establish a network to be able to, to deliver it to the consumer. Then the most important factor, I think that money can't buy, and that's the ability to get experience in dealing with recalls. And this car had a recall, it had an airbag recall. So approximately call it, you know, a few hundred units uh, to a thousand units that that needed to uh, to be retrofitted with uh, new upgraded airbags and then call it, you know, be over time about a thousand cars on the road. So you have cars that need parts, you have cars that break down that need service. And so you, you established organically over time an, an ecosystem that uh, services a car that provides parts for a car on a national level and an infrastructure to put the consumers in and out of vehicles. So over time, the experience, I think, was well worth the, the risk to, to get into the vehicle. And from that, we segued into the vehicle that's behind you, which is the K50, which was a partnership with a company in China called Kiantu. And this was the first time where I felt like, here we get a sexy car. I finally can grab my heart, my, you know, put my arms around something that's sexy, that's all carbon fiber, that's something that I would drive, and made a deal to bring that vehicle to the U.S. with the agreement we would homologate it and, and assemble it as an assembled vehicle here in the United States. 
Um, we debuted that vehicle in April of 2019 at the uh, New York Auto Show at the Javis Center. We garnered 250 million um, media impressions. We brought the house down. We carried that over to Indianapolis, one of the biggest um, shows on the planet when it comes to the automotive space, literally the Super Bowl of auto racing. And we sponsored, co-sponsored Indy. We ran commercials on NBC for that car behind you and uh, really broke the internet uh, during that period of time and then carried that over to uh, Detroit where we sponsored both Detroit Grand Prix. And then we ended uh, 2019, uh, August of 2019 at Pebble Beach and really just had a great run. And then COVID uh, you know, hit us all and uh, we had to reset. And during that reset time, I decided, I said, look, you know, I, I never really had an opportunity to do something from scratch that I wanted to do. And I felt this was an opportunity to commission some great people uh, to build a car from scratch, make it 100% American and not have to go try to rework, resell somebody else's failure or somebody else's misfortune. And uh, sat with Andreas Thurner, who, um, as the guy behind the Rolls Royce Ghost, among other great um, vehicles that are legendary, and commissioned him to uh, put together what I wanted in an SUV, which at the time and still is today the number one selling segment in in, in vehicles, specifically electric vehicles, and uh, decided that I was going to do what I wanted to do, not what somebody else wanted to do. And uh, David, David, and I, I don't, I don't think people realize how long you've been at this. If you think about 2014, you've been at this a long time. That's also a pretty risk on moment too. Uh, David, well, we, we started, we started this in 2010 and 11, and here we are in 2022. But you know, pro- as we progressed over time, mm-hmm. um, you know, we've learned as we, I tell people the, the best way you know, <laughs> no one overnight is, a, you know, no, the old saying, right? Overnight success, 10 years in the making. Uh, actually, success has to be earned over time. And success isn't um, given, it's earned. So I like to believe that we have a long ways to go. We're 100%, no way am I saying we're successful. To me, success would be capturing a very small percentage of the SUV market in the EV space. Um, you know, again, to, I recognize, you know, the 10,000 pound, you know, gorilla in the room that opened the door and made it possible for a guy like me to follow his dream and, and, and be you, able uh, to build a car. David, David, is it is it permissible? And it may not be, may not be permissible. Are we allowed to talk about no. uh, that or no? No. no. Okay. Uh, David, so, I, I, but, I, but, I, but, but, but will I will, what I will say is that not just Mullen, but every EV company in the space from, you know, from Lordstown to, to um, um, uh, Workhorse, to Lucid, to Rivian, to Fisker, to Mullen. No one would be here today if it wasn't for Tesla and Elon Musk. Elon Musk broke the door down and allowed guys like us an opportunity. And for that, Mullen will forever be grateful to, to Elon Musk and to Tesla for giving us an opportunity by breaking that that barrier down. Mm-hmm. Mullen wishes, right? Its goal is to capture just a very small percentage, 5% of that EV SUV space that, you know, today Tesla is 100% of the business. I don't care what anybody says, you know, an ICE uh, gas company, that produces gas motors isn't going to compete with a vehicle company that produces only electric vehicles. And people look at the disparity. When you look at what the OEMs, like the GMs, even with the Bolt and the Volt and all of these offerings across the board, none of these guys, you know, they scratch their head and they wonder why they, they don't, you know, they can't compete with Tesla. I could tell you why they, they don't compete with Tesla. One, Tesla makes an amazing product, but two, people want to buy electric vehicles from an electric vehicle manufacturer, not a gas vehicle manufacturer. So that's being one. Uh, Two, um, performance. All of these guys, they want to be the company that has the cheapest electric vehicle. So when you start to work and trying to build the cheapest electric vehicle, you're going to pigeonhole yourself in a a place where, you know, you're going to cut 
corners and you're going to cut performance and you're going to cut quality. And at the end of the day, you're going to have something that will disappear as quick as it came in. Tesla established the foundation, right? They made, first and foremost, they developed and built a beautiful car, a car that had sex appeal to begin with. And then they added performance. And do you know what? No one had a problem paying them premium dollars for that vehicle. And then they bought it, be, it because it was electric. It was because it was sexy and had performance. And then it was electric, not because it was electric. Hey, so uh, we, hey, hey David, no, I, we Dave, David, I apologize, but we're, I don't want to run out of time. And I promised the audience that I would ask you questions. Some of them may not be the answer. And I know that obviously you're in quiet periods and stuff like that. Probably the number one question I've been getting is, and I know Elon Musk got a loan from the government. I know that people apply, it takes a long time. Are you able to comment on that at all? That's probably the number sure. one question I got. And I, I respect if you can't, um, but I sure. wondered if you can say anything about the loan. Absolutely. Uh, it's public information. We filed uh, under the AVTM loan program on January 8th, 2020. And we're going to amend that application uh, in April of this year to reflect two new things that have happened. One, to reflect the factory that we own in Tunica, Mississippi. And two, to reflect the SUV that we currently now have as our main primary offering. And then that, that application will be submitted in April and we anticipate that we'll get to what they call a substantially complete position where the DOE then will go out and do road shows with us. And then from there, by the fourth quarter of this year, we'll get to conditional commitment, which is funding by the U.S. Treasury. Just a little FYI, when we debuted the car on uh, uh, November 17th in L.A. at the L.A. Auto Show, the United States Department of Energy was there for our debut. We speak to them on a weekly basis. We also had major municipalities, uh, uh, supporters, both from um, uh, the uh, great state of, of Tennessee, as well as Mississippi uh, uh, here in, in LA at our, de at our debut. So we do have a lot of uh, local support at the municipality level and at the federal level. We spent a lot of 2019 before COVID on Capitol Hill, both at the House and the Senate and at the White House with the previous administration. So we like to believe we're doing a good thing by creating, you know, our mission is not just to build a great vehicle, but it's to put Americans back to work. And that's what our initiative is, is right. One, we're going to build a great car. It's going to be 100% nice. American. And two, we're going to put Americans back to work in America. Can you talk Perfect. about, can you talk about Mississippi? I, I, I think that it was exciting. You're going to build stuff in Mississippi. What's Mississippi like? What are the people around there like? Are they excited about the plant? Does anyone really know what's happening down there? Sure, sure. You know, we, we're, we're working with local government there as well as um, uh, local government in, in Tennessee, both Tennessee and, and Mississippi. Um, again, you know, it's America. It's uh, right there in the heartland. You know, it's it's in that uh, automotive corridor that extends all the way from from the great state of Michigan all the way down to Florida. And uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna put people back to work. We're gonna get pride in building American products. Bring manufacturing. Bring you know engineering. Uh, bring in. Uh, bringing jobs back back home and uh, build products that not only Americans can be proud of, but the whole world uh, can participate and buy and, and just, you know, turn that wheel and get, get it moving. We're going to be one small piece of it, but that piece is a very important piece. It gets that wheel turning. We, uh, David, you and I for sure are on the same page there. We are an American miner ourselves. We mine in Michigan for Bitcoin. We believe, obviously, that's coming to America, and we have been planning for that. Uh, we never knew that they were going to ban crypto. But do you think the, the, the combustion engine is effectively going to be banned? I'm curious as to your thoughts on where, I mean, it seems like you, if you had AOC, if she had her way, we'd, we'd, we'd probably uh, take a train, electric train somewhere. There'd be no flying and there'd be no combustion engines. What do you think is going to happen there over the long haul? I'd be a liar if I told you I thought they were all going to be banned. I mean, look, I think there's a place for everyone right? You know, the electric vehicles, gas vehicles. I think the OEMs like GM and Ford that build great gas products, they built great ICE vehicles and, uh, and they've done it for a real long time. And some of these guys have founded the automotive space. They, you know, they're, they're, they're great at what they do. And there's a space and there, there will always be a space for them. Even if every municipality on this planet decided that they were going to, you know, make it a mandate that everybody at some point has to be electric. 
you know, you're still going to have the residual effect of these vehicles that are on the road and they're never really going to go away. Um, you know, look, today, right, uh, you know, 100 years later, you still got horses. You still got people that, that ride them. They, you know, they're never going <laughs> to go away. Hey, hey uh, David, Jason, my partner, wants to ask you a question. Hey, Dave, thanks sure. for coming on the show. Uh, I'm getting a, a, a question that's very similar in the chat. Uh, in the future, could you see Mullen uh, USA taking uh, Bitcoin? Oh, you know, you, you you took my question. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Okay, I see that. Now, David, so we mine Bitcoin, and I know a friend of mine just signed up for your car yesterday. He bought, put the 100 bucks down. Uh, and I have people in the chat saying, will you take Dogecoin? Will you take Bitcoin as payment? Maybe they're holding it and they want to buy a car. I, Dave, okay, go ahead, Jason. I'm sorry. You, yeah. you, I want to ask that question. Well, but go ahead. You well, do it's it. out there now. All right. All right. Well, Dave, we'll get, what do you think? We'll get an answer to that one. Well, honestly, we haven't even really explored that right now. We're just focused on our uh, mission at hand, and, and that is to do what we promise, and that's to deliver vehicles, uh, try to be as efficient as, as possible. And uh, we are using conventional methods right now. Uh, we have an internal uh, uh, finance department called Mullen Funding Corp. We're creating uh, an infrastructure to be able to put you know, individuals into vehicles, either through purchase or lease programs. And I haven't really thought about um, uh, Bitcoin or uh, any type of digital currency, but I do have my chief financial officer right here with me. Her name is Carrie Sadler. And if she would like to interject on that, I'd, I'd be more than happy to have her speak on it. Carrie? Thank you very much, David. So um, as far as um, any cryptocurrency, um, as you said, we will, you know, explore that opportunity. I know that there are some um, EV manufacturers that are using it, Tesla for one. Um, we will do whatever we can to, um, you know, to facilitate the sale of vehicles. And if cryptocurrency is going to be accepted within the U.S. currency system, um, then we will explore that opportunity and, and and offer it to potential customers. Appreciate that. Hey, uh, David, one last question uh, before we, we, we wrap up here. Uh, is there any, uh, and I don't even know if I should ask, ask this, but one of the top questions I got besides the loan uh, was Apple. Is there, I, I assume you have no comment on anything with Apple. I mean, I know they want to get in the car business, right? You, do, you don't have anything to say there, do you? I have no comment. Yeah. I mean, I guess that could make sense, right? If you, I mean, Apple did buy Beats, right? I mean, I, I have no idea. You guys are, I want to be clear, no idea on, on uh, David and I don't discuss plans. It, David is, uh, you know, we're just, we're minority passive investors, uh, but we're excited. The cars are beautiful. David, uh, thank you so well, much for coming on the can show. Can we get one more? Okay, let's get one more. Dave, let's one go. more. I want, a lot of people are asking about your battery technology. Can we speak on the lithium sulfur battery in, in the van? And, uh, and just the technology there, the next generation? Sure. So to be clear, our current vehicle is slated to use conventional chemistry, just like everybody else, right? Reliable, safe lithium iron phosphate technology. But what Mullen is doing, Mullen has been now for, for, for several years working on a solid state polymer battery solution. We put out a press release not too long ago, which is public information, and I can elaborate on that. We tested a rated a cell rated at 300 amp hours and it came back at 343 amp hours at 4.3 volts what's important that this is a solid state polymer solution meaning you can scale at the level of 50 uh, percent meaning if a equivalent of 150 kilowatt hour pack that uses conventional chemistry occupies the form factor of let's say x we can reduce that uh, that form factor by 50% and keep the same 150 kilowatt hour um, uh, uh, equivalent. More importantly, um, the key to it all is that we don't use any dangerous metals. Meaning, in your typical chemistries, you have dangerous metals, and at some point, you got to dispose of them, and it becomes dangerous goods, and it's hard to dispose of, and you, it's environmentally not safe. More importantly, you take a conventional cell that people use today, and if you take a torch and you put it up to a conventional battery, watch what will happen. That thing will explode like a bomb. You take our solid-state polymer cell, you take a torch, you can burn a hole right through it, and nothing will happen. You can right. take a conventional battery and submerge it in salt water and watch what happens. You'll have, one, you'll have one hell of a fire. You take our cell, you can submerge it in salt water and take it out and use it, no problem. 
Here's the best feature. Forget about everything else. The best feature, degradation over 100,000 cycles. Degradation on our cell was 2%, so basically a flat line, meaning it really didn't, it really never degraded. So you take conventional chemistry, and after 5,000 cycles, degradation is like a cliff, 80%. So what does that tell you? It tells you it's more reliable, it's safe, and it's a half the cost and double the efficiency. So we feel very confident that our next in our next generation of vehicle, which will be this, the next rendition of the Mullen 5 in 2025, we will have a solid state polymer solution that'll go 150 mile, 150 kilowatt hour equivalent at half the space, half the cost will give you 600 real miles of range. 600 real wow. miles of range with real efficiency, longevity, reliability, and more importantly, safe. So that, that, that's what we're focusing on. We're focusing on the technology that we're developing, that we're going to file uh, IPs here in the United States to protect. You know, David, I will tell you, you had about 2,000 people. I think there's about close to 1,800 or so right now watching the show. You've definitely got... 5, what? 5, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, David. Well, I did a terrible job. 5,100 people watch the show already live. 5,100. And, and David, I was there. I saw your two cars. They're beautiful. I'm, we're rooting for hey, you. Hey, don't forget about the vans. I know. I know there's vans coming. Vans, yeah. David, we're rooting for you. You got a, a heavy lift. You are a risk-on guy. Don't let everyone tell you don't take risk. You definitely took risk. We are rooting for you. We know it's a tough being public. You get a lot of criticism. Uh, I'm the king of it. My my stock is trading below the cash they said to Bitmain. I mean, I'm I'm aware of what can happen in the public markets, but you got to keep going and and we're excited about your vision. Obviously, uh, I don't. I mean, I could have never built a car, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. Jason, you ever see yourself building a car? Don't ever say never. <laughs> hey, David, uh, thank you and to your CFO for being here. We appreciate your time yesterday. Thank you. And good luck, you. With, good luck with the loan. Good luck with Mississippi. Good luck being public and all the things you got to do there. And obviously, just keep pushing forward. We appreciate your time, David. Uh, David, uh, thank you for being here. You think we could get uh, an, another uh, quarterly visit to update? Yeah, well, David, we'll be reaching out to you. Obviously, you're a risk on guy. Maybe love to have you at the show. But we'd love to check in with you on a quarterly basis. Awesome. So if your schedule Absolutely. permits, hopefully, hopefully that can happen. Take care, David. Be thank well, you. Everybody. I, we hey, appreciate guys. the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you so much. Guys, uh, check out uh, uh, the Risk On Conference coming up the 12th, uh, 13th, 14th, and 15th. Uh, make sure The conference tickets are available. Go to toddoff.com forward slash ROC, Risk On Conference. Uh, yeah, I got that. Look at you. Christy is like as productive as possible. <laughs> uh, well, man, this is great. Christy, uh, let's run the BitNile car one more time. We're going to be running in Texas. The 200th episode is going to be this Friday. But before we sign off, Skyla, it better be funny today. Okay. So a boy went to a costume party with a girl on his back. And his friend goes, oh, well, what are you supposed to be? And he says, I'm a turtle. And his friend goes... So why do you have a girl on his back? And the guy responds, it's Michelle. Ah, ha, ha. Hey, guys here, if you're tuning in first time, we do a lot of dad jokes here. We've got to keep it clean because our producer and the CEO of our media business will uh, kick our butt. Everybody, check out the conference. Go to uh, my social media. Check it out. Special thanks to Mullen for showing up today. I had a good time. Thank you for letting us be there yesterday to see your cars. Remember, this is not an endorsement for the stock of Mullen. It's not an endorsement for anything other than I thought the cars are beautiful. Remember that Nile has a position in Mullen and invested with a private company. Everybody, take care. And, Jason, What's go that? Bitcoin. Yep. 41300 We're going to be mining two Bitcoin a month by the end of the month, give or take a couple weeks, because you got to install those 2,600 miners, 2,300, which are going to be shipped by by air. I mean, by a plane. You're going to lease a plane, dude. Yeah, going to have to do it. This is real charter shit, yep, right? going to charter. Everybody, to my friend Jason and the 5,100 people that signed on, Skyla, Nick, Brett, Christy, and Willie up there in Vancouver. Everybody take care. This is Risk On. Risk On, everybody. Take care.
whatever your business is, if you want to scale it, you want to be here, we're going to have lots of other people there that have actually built businesses. This will make somebody's life about a thousand times better. You got a business and you want to expand your business, whether you're in the restaurant business, you're in technology, whatever your business is, if you want to scale it, you want to be here. This is going to be a conference where you can learn something, meet people and network. Limited slots are available. Head over to Tottle.com and register today.